Good day to all. My name is Vitaly Sokolov. Today we will learn how to download, install and configure a Castle game engine. We will also get acquainted with its interface. First, launch the internet browser you are using and write the name of the game engine in the search box. In this case, a Castle game engine. Among those sites that your search engine will give out, go to the official site of the game engine. It's called Castle engine.io. When you go to the main page of the site, we immediately have access to buttons for downloading the game engine. We can download and use the engine on the following operating systems, Windows, Linux, and Raspberry Pi. In addition to ready made engine assemblies for the desired system, we can download files from the GitHub. The easiest way for you to download is simply to click on one of the first three buttons, choosing your operating system. And the download will either start automatically, or you will be prompted to open or download the archive and select a location to save on your computer. By default, files are downloaded to the download folder on the local C drive. The second download option is download from GitHub. Going to the site, you need to click on the code button and then click download the zip archive. This version of the archive will take up less space on your computer, but it will also have fewer ready made examples of games and programs that are created on this engine. Using these examples, you can explore the capabilities of the engine and learn how to create projects of this type. After downloading the archive, it must be opened using one of the archiver programs, for example, WinZip, 7-Zip or WinRAR. In my case, I have the WinRAR program installed. Thanks to this, when I double click the left mouse button on the archive, I can open it. When opened, the contents of the archive are displayed. In our case, this is the folder with the game engine. There are three ways to unpack the archive. First option. We can either just click on this folder and, without releasing the left mouse button, drag the folder to any place convenient for us. The second option is to open the archive by double clicking the left mouse button and click on the extract button. In this case, you can specify the location for extracting the archive. If this location is not specified, the archive will be extracted to the same folder where the archive itself will be located. A new folder with the name of the archive itself will appear right next to it. The third option is to simply right click and also select the option to extract the archive. Then everything is the same as in the second option. But keep in mind that you can unpack the archive only to those places where the path to the folder will not contain characters that do not belong to the Latin alphabet, for example, Russian letters. How to find out? You go to the folder with the engine and click on the top of the path line. In my case, I unpack the engine into the root folder on the local drive C and I don't have Russian symbols there. Now we need to find a folder named Bean in the folder with the engine. It contains the launch files we need. The first file is a castle editor. He is a visual editor or constructor when creating projects on this engine. Click on it with the right mouse button and select send and then to the desktop. We do the same with a file called castle image viewer and send its shortcut to the desktop. This shortcut will work with images. With it, we can open the image and work with them. With the third file called 3D scene view, we do the same. Send a shortcut to the desktop. This shortcut will launch a program that can load 3D models, view their animations, work with bones and much more. And you can also view large 3D game scenes. Next, we can close this folder. And on the desktop, we can arrange our three shortcuts as it is convenient for us. At this point, the installation of the game engine can be said to be complete, but we still need to configure it and link it to the programming environment. Double-click on the shortcut of the castle editor. When you start, you get a window with four buttons. The first button is a new project. She is responsible for creating a completely new project. The second button is to open the project. It allows you to open previously saved projects that have already been created earlier. Also, with its help, you can familiarize yourself with ready made examples from the developers of the engine. This will allow you to understand how projects of various types are created. Such projects are in a folder called examples in the folder with the game engine. The third button, open recent project allows you to open the latest projects that were launched on your computer. But at the moment we are more interested in the settings button. 
It will allow us to properly configure the game engine. Click on this button. In the window that opens, on the first tab, in the FPC path field, we need to enter the path to the folder with the free Pascal compiler. This compiler will compile all our applications. If you have the Lazarus programming environment installed, then it can be located in the folder with it. It can also the JET is located in the Delphi folder, or can be downloaded and placed separately. And in the Lazarus path field, indicate the folder where the Lazarus development environment is installed. When all the necessary paths are installed, you need to click on the button. Registration of Lazarus packages. After that, a message should appear that the components were installed successfully. On the second tab, if we are using the Lazarus environment for programming, then we put the mark Lazarus, and if we are using Delphi or another environment, then we select the custom option and indicate where it is installed. If you bind the Delphi environment, then keep in mind that only new versions of Delphi are supported, and at the moment, Delphi support is not yet 100% implemented. And on the sound tab, you can set the sound level. I leave the default option, and at the moment I had no particular complaints about this. After completing all the settings, click on the OK button. Next, we will consider the options for creating new projects. Click on the New Project button. A new window opens, in which we are offered to choose one of four options. We can create an empty project. This option is suitable in most cases and allows you to create both 2D projects and 3D projects. The second option is to launch a program for viewing 2D scenes and models for testing them, viewing animations and compatibility. The third option allows you to create 3D games. And the fourth option allows you to create 2D games. The last two options differ from the first in that they will already be slightly customized and the project will include more files, some of which may not be useful. After selecting the project type a little lower in the project location field, we indicate the folder in which our projects will be saved by default and create our own folders there. The path can be written manually from the keyboard, you can also click on the Choose Directory button and select the folder for saving projects with the mouse. A little lower in the field name of the project, we can set the name of our project in Latin letters. Despite the fact, that the program allows you to specify the name of the project with spaces, if present, it will generate an error. It will say that all spaces must either be removed or replaced with other characters, such as underscores or hyphens. Even below, in the project title field, the title of our project is indicated. Usually they write the name of the game there. This name will be shown in the title bar of the window if the game is running in windowed mode. For example, pay attention to the title of this con in which we are now at the very top. It says New Project and Castle Game Engine. The last field is the name of the main unit in our project, where the program code will be written. His name can be left the same. Unchanged. After making all the necessary changes, click on the Create Project button. After creating the project, the main window of the visual game editor is launched. I will not make its window full screen at home, so that the picture is larger for you and everything is more legible. First, let's get acquainted with the interface. At the bottom left, we show the directories of our project. Our project is called new, so the main folder is named the same. Inside it we see two more folders. The first is called the code. It will contain PA files with the source code of our project. If we now click on this folder, we will see that several files of its Nutria have already been created. The first file is responsible for initializing the project. There the initial values are set, and the initial settings and settings of the project are set. And a little below there is a second file, which also has the source code of the project. In it, we will work with the main window of the project and not only. You also need to know that, if you are creating a cross-platform application, you only need to work with one form or window. Since mobile operating systems cannot work with more than one window in an application, Therefore, in such projects, do not use two or more windows. Work with one window, and already this window can be assigned various designs and scenes and change them among themselves. If we double-click on it with the left mouse button, this file will automatically start in the Lazarus programming environment. And we can both read the already written and prepared code of this unit and add our new code here. We also have a data folder in the main folder. 
it is customary to put images, 3D models, text files, databases and all the necessary game files into it, for example, game interfaces, scenes. When compiled, the game engine will be able to properly package this folder for different platforms. Within the data folder, you can create any number of other folders for convenient file sorting. We have already created the first game interface here. We can double click on it, and this scene will appear I. Will appear in the visual editor. This scene is our first interface. To work with it, let's look at the remaining two panels. On the left we have a component hierarchy panel. There will be a list of both visual and non visual components. Visual components are components that are visible to the user of the program and he can often interact with them sometimes. For example buttons, switches or images. And non visual components will not be visible to the user. You can also change the size of the window by dragging the borders with the left mouse button, for example, this can be done in the area of the center at the bottom or center on the right or left. These places are marked with dots. We already have a group component on the left. It can combine various components inside itself. It is not a visual component. The user will not see it. At the moment, a label component has already been created inside it, which displays the number of frames per second FPS. Label can be moved with the left mouse button over the entire parent component, inside which this component is created. You cannot go outside the parent component. If you want to create new designs, you need to click on the top of the menu, Design, and select a new user interface and a new design type. In this case, the current design, or scene, will be closed, and a new design with the scene will be created. And if you want to add components to the current scene or design, use the same design menu, but select the Add options, after which you can choose what exactly will be added to the scene. These can be visual, or non, visual components, behaviors, and so on. Non visual components include those that are not visible on the screen, but the player can feel their work. For example, a timer that performs some action at regular intervals or fonts. The fonts themselves are not visible, but the text that is written by them is visible. Fonts can be both graphic. These are the ones that are drawn in separate pictures letter by letter. There are also standard ones that are saved in one of the popular formats. There are also transformable components, which we will get to know later. We can duplicate all components by clicking on the desired component on the left in the hierarchy with the right mouse button and selecting the duplicate item. A copy of it will be created. I showed you how to add new components through the top drop-down menu. But there is also an option to create components immediately on the left in the component hierarchy pane. By right clicking in an empty space, we can create components that will consider the main component as their parent and be inside it. And if we click on one of the existing components with the right mouse button and create a new component, then it will automatically become a child of this component and will be inside it. For example, we create a vertical group component. It is not a visual component and there is nothing inside it now. It is needed so that the components inside it are arranged in a column and combined into one quadrilateral, along with which the nested components will move. It will also be possible to conveniently adjust the spacing between components at the same distance. If we create a button, which will be a child of the group, then it will be able to move freely inside this component, and we have it stretched to the size of the entire window. The full size property is enabled. But if I take the button component and drag it from the left in the hierarchy to the vertical group component to its right side so that a triangle appears, then the button becomes a child component of the vertical group. And now it cannot go beyond the component of the vertical group. You also need to know that for each component on the left, the basic properties are displayed on the right panel. These are the main properties with which you most often have to work and you can display all the properties of the component, of which there can be quite a lot, for this, click all. Arrows to the right on properties indicate that this is a drop-down list that contains additional properties inside. There is also an event tab. It shows the events that can occur with components and are processed in the program code. For example when a component is clicked, or when it is rendering, or when it is refreshed. There is a lay it tab. In this tab, we can snap the component to any window edges or any window corners. This allows you to adjust the position and alignment of components so that when you change the size of the window, 
they are always located correctly. And a little lower there are only those properties of the component that are responsible for its size, padding and alignment. When dragging a vertical group, the button inside it will also drag. But so that we can drag the vertical group, we must turn off auto width and auto height in its properties so that we can change its size by stretching this component. And by clicking on the area of a component, we can drag it with all its child components. We can duplicate the button component, and then both buttons will be a vertical group inside the component. And they are arranged in a column. To change the size of the buttons, we must also turn off the auto, width and auto, height properties, as well as auto, size. We can but of course, to create each button outside the components of a vertical or horizontal group, but then you will have to adjust its alignment and snapping separately for each button, which will take more time. Often you may need to upload some pictures. To do this, you can use the image component. We add it to our scene. This component is added to the very bottom of the hierarchy. It should be borne in mind that the components are drawn in the order in which each component is located in the list on the left. For example, the group component should be drawn first. But it is not visual, so it is not drawn. Next is the label component. It is visual, and therefore is drawn on the screen. Next comes another non visual component, the vertical group, so it is not drawn. Then two buttons are drawn in the window, and the last component is the image component. Which component is drawn later will be drawn on top of all components that were drawn before it. Therefore, the image in the image component can overlap all other components. Now we will load the image into the component. To do this, we will use the URL property. We will indicate there the path to the picture. When I add a picture, I get a message that I need to put the picture in the data folder so that the game engine can work correctly with it in the future and pack it together with the project. In the next video tutorials, we will do so, but for now we will simply ignore this message since this is just an example. Please note that when the image is loaded, we see only a small part of it. This is due to the fact that the size of the picture is much larger than the size of our window. In order to resize the picture to fit the window, you need to enable the full size property. Now, no matter how I change the size of the window, the picture will stretch or shrink to this size. Also, notice that the picture now covers all the components since it is drawn last. Select the image component and drag it above. After that, the components become visible to us. There are several buttons at the top. One square button and plus. This button activates the scene editing mode. This allows you to customize and modify components. And to the left there is a button in the form of an empty square. It turns off edit mode and the components will behave as they do when the application is launched. There is also a code button in the top menu. There you can create new units, modules, for writing code. In the run menu, we can compile our application. You can also do this by pressing the Ctrl and F9 keys. Or we can compile the project and run it. This can be done without a menu by pressing the F9 key. We can also choose the compilation mode of the project. Debug mode is a mode for debugging and changing, testing a project. And release mode is the compilation mode of an already finished project, which is ready to use. In this case, everything unnecessary is removed from the project. There is also a mode of launching an application without compiling it. This can be useful at the stage of creating an application. In the platform menu item, we can choose which operating system we are going to compile the application for. There are both computer operating systems and mobile or console ones. I choose 32-bit compilation. Press the F9 key and wait for the project to be compiled. Below, in the output tab, you can see the compilation process. If we have any errors, we will see them there. Compilation takes a long time. It takes over a minute on my computer. I have an SSD disk, 6-core AMD 6300 processor. Perhaps the compilation time depends also on what platform the application is compiled for. So when you compile, you can go make yourself some tea. Our project was compiled without errors and we see our game window with buttons and FPS display. We can even click on the buttons, but nothing will happen since we have not written any actions for them. It can be seen that our application quietly produces 59 60 frames per second. We can adjust the number of frames in the project code. If you want your application to run not in windowed mode, but in full 
screen mode, this is also configured in the program code. We can resize the window and see how our buttons will behave if they are not anchored and not aligned correctly. When we shrink the window, we see our buttons go down. In the next video tutorials, we will learn how to align them correctly. The last thing we need to study today is the removal of components. To do this, in the hierarchy of components on the left, you can right click on the desired component and select the delete item. If I delete a vertical group component, then all components that were nested inside it are deleted along with it. But if I try to delete the group component, it won't be deleted since it is the main component in this scene. But the components inside it can be removed very easily. To remove this component, you can remove this scene completely from the project or without saving add this scene to the project if you have not already done so. That's all for today. If the video was useful to you, put a like under the video, write a comment, this is important for the channel where you can ask your questions. Play the bell so you don't miss out on new videos on the channel. Vitaly Sokolov was with you. All successful game creation and see you.